Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on asthma, in which we are going to discuss the structure of a bronchus. Okay, so we're going to discuss bronchus histology. Okay, which is really microanatomy. It's looking at the small structure of a bronchus. Okay, right. So let's begin. So we'll start off with the most, the innermost layer of a bronchus. Okay, which is the uh, what's known as the mucosa, which is the epithelium which uh, secretes mucus. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Um, so we'll draw it nice and big. So we'll put it down here. Okay, so let's say this is the basement membrane on which the epithelial cells are going to sit, okay? And then let's draw some epithelial cells sitting on here. So the epithelial cells that are on the surface of uh, bronchi are what are known as columnar epithelial cells. Oh dear, and I've just put that label where I will probably want to draw stuff later, never mind. Uh, columnar epithelial cells. Okay? Right. So, uh, you have a layer of columnar epithelial cells all the way around uh, the lumen of the bronchus. Okay? So, the center here, this is the lumen of the airway, basically. This is where the air will actually be. So, here is the lumen in here. Okay? And then we have our columnar epithelial cells surrounding that lumen. Now, these columnar epithelial cells are all ciliated, so they have little cilia coming off here. So here I'll draw some little cilia. Okay, so let me divide up these columnar epithelial cells. Now what it means for them to be columnar is that they're sort of this uh, rectangular shape, at least when viewed uh, in a cross section like this. Okay, so they're quite tall. They're very different from, for instance, uh, the epithelial cells uh, that you'd have in the skin, or uh, the epithelial cells that line the blood vessels, which are very, very flat and pressed uh, against the uh, basement membrane that they are attached to. Okay, so here are columnar epithelial cells here. And they will all be ciliated, but I don't know if I can um, <laughs> quite get up the energy to... Oh, maybe I will. So here are some cilia on the surface of these columnar epithelial cells. Now, not all of these cells that line um, the um, lumen of this uh, airway will actually be uh, epithelial cells. Some of them will be what are known as goblet cells. So let's colour these ones in a separate colour. So interdispersed among the epithelial cells, which are ciliated, you'll have these goblet cells. So I'll put three of them then. Let's have this as a goblet cell as well. Okay, now, goblet cells have a spe special role, basically. So let's label this up as a goblet cell, okay? Uh, and basically, the role of the goblet cells is to secrete the mucus that lines uh, the lungs, well, lines the uh, lumen of the airway, basically. So this is a goblet cell. So it will be secreting a layer of slime, basically. And to show where this layer of mucus will be, let me just put a few more cilia on these normal epithelial cells. So the goblet cells will not have cilia, but the epithelial cells here, these columnar epithelial cells, will be ciliated. Okay, so cilia are just little projections from the cells that go into uh, the uh, lumen, basically. So they're finger-like projections, basically, coming off the surface of the cell. They're kind of like hair, but they are actually uh, structures with it that mould the cell membrane into that shape. Okay, so I'll just label up the cilia as well. So let's label this up as a cilia. Okay, and they're tiny little structures which beat and will waft mucus upwards. Okay, so where is the mucus? Well, the mucus is going to be secreted from the goblet cells, and it's going to form a layer on the surface of these cilia, like so. Okay, so here's the mucus on the surface of the cilia here, in green. Okay, so this is the mucus layer. So, basically, if you are a uh, an air molecule, let's say an oxygen molecule or a nitrogen molecule, you will firstly be in contact with mucus that is uh, on the surface of the cilia, 
and then underneath the mucus will be the cilia themselves, and underneath the cilia will be these uh, columnar epithelial cells, okay? And basically, what the role of this mucus is, is that it takes part in what's known as the mucociliary escalator. So basically, if you get any uh, particulate matter or potentially bacteria uh, in the airways, they will get caught in this mucus and they'll get stuck in it because it's very sticky. Then what will happen is the cilia will waft, basically. They'll gradually move, just like gentle little movements, and they'll move this mucus up okay, up and out. So they'll move it up to higher bronchi and then up into the trachea, up the trachea and then out uh, through the larynx into the laryngopharynx and then the idea is that you'll swallow this mucus and then it will go down to the stomach uh, where it will be destroyed, okay. So it's basically the way of keeping the airways uh, free of dirt and potentially dangerous bacteria. Okay, so it's part of um, your innate immune protection against uh, bacteria and also just to keep the airways clean. You don't want dirt in there. Okay, uh, so that's known as the mucociliary escalator because the um, cilia are going to escalate uh, the mucus upwards. Okay, so what do you have underneath these uh, columnar epithelial cells, because that's not the only uh, layer that makes up a bronchus. Okay, so they're sitting on a basement membrane, so let me highlight this more by actually drawing the basement membrane in, in turquoise. So, you have to ask, what actually are these epithelial cells sitting on? What attaches them and holds them in their position? Why don't they just fall off, basically? And the reason is that they're connected very tightly to a basement membrane, which is made up of protein, basically. Okay, so the main protein that the basement membrane consists of is collagen, but it also contains things like uh, laminins and fibrillin as well, is a very important component. Okay, so this is the basement membrane here. Okay, now, what then is underneath the basement membrane? Well, basically, underneath the basement membrane, there is a layer of connective tissue following that. Okay, another layer of connective tissue known as the lamina propria. So let me just find a colour that I want to denote this in. So this is mainly collagen that will make up this now. Okay, so this next layer is what's known as the lamina propria, and it will be a bit thicker than this. Okay, so I don't know how I can make it look thicker without a lot of effort. Okay, so um, maybe I'll go around again, okay? So another, it's a big thick layer of connective tissue, and certainly it's thicker than the basement membrane. So I want it to look thicker than the basement membrane. So this is what's known as the lamina propria, and it's a layer of connective tissue underneath the basement membrane. Okay, so let me color, label this up. So this is lamina propria. Okay, then, what do you have underneath lamina propria? Well, you have a layer of smooth muscle cells now, okay? So you're going to have a ring of smooth muscle cells surrounding this. So, uh, let me uh, get the red pen out. Okay, so, we'll have our smooth muscle cells underneath now. So, this is another quite thick layer, so... Let me put this in here. So in red here, we now have the smooth muscle cell layer. Okay, and this will consist of rings of vas well, not vascular smooth muscle cells, sorry, uh, of uh, smooth muscle cells, okay? So you'll have um, these rings of vascular, not of vascular, of smooth muscle cells that surround the lumen of the uh, bronchus, okay? Now, the importance of this, and let me just uh, draw a little picture to... Um, emphasize this. So basically what you've got is these little smooth muscle cells like this, and then you'll have them connected tip to tip like so. Okay, now the importance of this ring structure is that if all of these smooth muscle cells, um, if all of them contract, then what will happen? Then they're all going to get 
smaller, the lengths will go down. Now, if the length of every single one of these smooth muscle cells that makes up this ring that is surrounding the bronchus, uh, if the, all of their lengths go down, then the circumference of the entire ring is going to go down, okay? And if the circumference of the ring goes down, then the diameter also goes down. So if you go from having a big ring to having a smaller circumference ring, the diameter is going to go down. So the ring will constrict, basically, and that constriction will be... Um, will be transferred to the inner layers of the bronchus, so the whole bronchus will constrict. So basically, these smooth muscle cells determine the diameter of the lumen of the bronchus, okay, so they can cause bronchoconstriction if they want. So this is a layer of smooth muscle cells, okay, and it's underneath uh, the lamina propria, smooth muscle cells. Okay, right. So, what layer do you then have underneath the smooth muscle? Well, the next layer is what's known as the submucosa. And by the way, the, la the name for this endothelium with the cilia, cilia and the um, mucus on top, that is what we mean when we say the mucosa. So, all of this here, which mainly consists, obviously, of the columnar epithelial cells, but also of the goblet cells, this is the mucosa. Also... Uh, called a mucosal epithelium, okay? So mucosa is kind of short for mucosal epithelium, so an epithelium which can produce mucus. Okay, so underneath uh, the smooth muscle cell layer then, you're going to have what's known as the submucosa, okay? And I'll show this in the next video.